All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, day four of uh, WIT or WIT in English. And uh, today is January 4th, 2023. Thank you for uh, joining us. And um, we have a very special topic today. And before we start, I would like to uh, welcome you to, uh, to our meeting. And uh, the goal of uh, this meeting is to have a place where we can um, share this knowledge in English and uh, to spread the uh, wonderful knowledge that we have learned to every corner of the world. And uh, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us today. This is a very uh, special uh, mission and uh, is, uh, couldn't have been done without your help and support. So uh, thank you very much for uh, being with us. And let me share screen real quick before we start. All right, just my camera a little bit there. Camera work a little bit better today compared to uh, yesterday. All right. So just a quick recap on uh, what we have been doing in the past three days. This was very uh, successful. So on the first day, we uh, we went over the sixth barrier. And uh, for the sixth barrier, we uh, we learned that in life, um, as soon as we start having a good idea, as soon as we wanted to do something, when we uh, when we wanted to get something done to achieve something, um, we often have barriers that stopping us from getting to where we want it to be and understanding the sixth barrier we will be able to break away and we will be able to have a transformation so that our inner self will grow. And um, doing that, we will not only help in ourselves, but we also help other, especially family and loved one who are close to us because they will see our uh, realities. They will be able to see and believe that it is possible and therefore is it is not only good for for us but for other as well and um on the second day we went over the principle of light and um the principle of light is a principle that can help you shine light into any dark room Figuratively, the lesson behind it is there's always two sides of the story. There's the binary system. Therefore, if you know how to light up, then you will be able to attract good things to you and um, avoiding darkness as in negative things or indesirable things. And during that day, we also um, introduced to the uh, the house. It is your house, and uh, it has a foundation as the inner self, your health, your relationship, and finance. And the reason this is important is because in life, if you were to uh, simplify everything in life, you will uh, you will have it fall under one of these four categories. And uh, understanding this, it will be a lot easier for uh, for us to, uh, to figure out what we needed to do. And uh, from then, it will also help us figure out what kind of barrier that we might have and how to get over those barriers. Oh, thank you, Gigi. Uh, you're saying hi here, Jesse as well. All right, and um, and then yesterday we uh, we went a little bit deeper into the house structure, and um, we got introduced to the seven holistic wealth. 
the seven holistic wealth is the seven element that will help you keep the house together. It will be able to help you have a fulfilling life, or we call it a uh, holistic life, right? Seven holistic wealth equal holistic life. And uh, yesterday we we dive very deep into presence and um, it, it was very, very special. Um, it was special for me too, even though uh, I uh, I was the uh, the presenter. But you know what? Thanks to uh, the energy of the uh, the room, I was able to dive deeper and have a deeper understanding of the topic. So uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, for joining me for supporting me on doing that. And um, let's continue on this topic just a little bit more before we uh, go to the uh, the circle of knowledge, which is today's main topic. Yesterday, I didn't have a chance to uh, to talk a little bit more about the uh, material and the immaterial. And um, it's kind of important, so let's, let's discuss it just a, a little bit further. So, at the end of uh, yesterday, we we were talking about the importance of materialize the immaterial things like wisdom, like presence, like virtue, like nobility. And um, yesterday we uh, we talked about how a millionaire have shared his experience and show people how to how to be financially independent, how to be a millionaire pretty much. And the important and the, the famous quote, he said that in order to make a million dollars, you have to be a millionaire first. And uh, what he is trying to express is that you have to have the characters of a millionaire. You have to have the, uh, the habit of a millionaire and you have to do what millionaire does and pretty much what he is doing is that he materialized the immaterial because the knowledge the wisdom of a millionaire is not tangible which means it's not something that you can hold on to or it's not something that you can measure but by materialize the wisdom he is able to he is able to easily explain it to others like myself because when I learned about what I needed to do, what kind of habit that I need to acquire, what kind of character one would need to accomplish the goal of being a a millionaire, then um, it will be easier to to acquire. And arguably, this is exactly what we are doing here, everybody. We are discussing this knowledge. We are materialize this information so that it will be easier to pass from one person to another. And um, there's a lot of value for immaterialized material things as well. And what do I mean by this? What I mean by this is exactly what is written on the paper. There are the three of three of the four um, holistic wealth is that we have capability, we have physique, we have material, and the difference between again the difference between material on the right hand side and the left hand side is that material on the right hand side is more of a noun which means it is your house, it is your car, or maybe it is your smartphone, your pen and paper. And um, we have to be able to immaterialize that to bring in more value. For example, if anyone ever own a, um, let's say a designer bag or a limited 
uh, feature item, you will know that it tend to cost way more to buy. For example, let's say a Gucci bag would cost like thousand of dollar, even tens of thousand of dollar. Why you can just go to a uh, convenience store and buy a bag for five, even ten dollars. So there's a difference in price, but what different in that is because people give it value. People would uh, tell you how nicer it is to to own those, or how it will increase your value, how it will make you look prettier. And um, speaking of that, I uh, I would like to share with you a story of Rolex. Have you have everybody have anybody ever heard of uh, like a hand watch uh, brand like Rolex? So Rolex is a um, a watch making uh, company, and uh, they was making uh, watches, and um, they uh, they make really good watches, <laughs> like a couple of hundred years ago, and um, you know with the technology nowadays, we can make like good watches pretty cheap so there's not really anything special about like a Rolex watch but a Rolex watch would cost like tens of thousands of dollars and even more because they only make a few of those each year and um, people would be willing to pay a lot of money for it and um their customer, when asked, why do you pay so much money for, for these watches? You have your smartphone, you have your all of your like technology to, to figure out what time it is to the second. Like, why do you have to have a watch, namely a Rolex watch? And um, what they tell people is that it is a status. Okay, let me let me give you a few seconds to for that to sink in. They buy it because it shows status. It shows that only successful and wealthy people can afford to own a Rolex watch. And to some people, they might not have the money to buy it but they they still try to to save money to to purchase one because it is the tool for them to connect with the wealthier friends the wealthier group so that they can they can um grow in their career so in a way those are no longer just a watch to look at time it is a tool. It is something that can increase a person's value. Therefore, a watch is no longer a watch. A purse or a bag is no longer a purse or a bag. It becomes something more. It has the, the immaterial value to it. And um, and this is the beautiful things about it. And this is something that we will dive deeper into a later topic. And uh, I just want to introduce that that very, very quickly. So there's a very uh, important saying from our teacher. He said that we need to materialize all of the immaterial things. And we need to immaterialize all of the material things. And later, once we uh, we get into uh, the triangle of reality, you will, you will have a deeper understanding of why we are doing this, why there are a three angle to everything and if we can fulfill all three it will 
it will be holistic, <laughs> right? It will be wholesome. And, uh, and that is the, uh, the seven holistic wealth. And uh, if you uh, if you wasn't here yesterday, I would highly recommend going back to uh, to listen to it. We don't have the uh, the video on on our YouTube yet, but uh, it will be up uh, soon. And uh, I would highly recommend you to uh, to go to the YouTube uh, channel to check it out. And then, by the way, that's not gonna have like all of the uh, the drawing that. Uh, I am drawing here, so I also recommend you to join us on on our live uh, section. All right, let's uh let's move on to uh, our main topic today. But prior to that, let let's go back to the principle of light. So there there are four important principles that we um we that will help us understand our inner self better. So the principle of light is one of it. And the beautiful things about all four of this principle is that you can apply even just one of this principle in anything you do. It will help you get to where you want to be. It will help you become successful and just understand one of these four principles and apply it. You will show great result. So let's uh, move on to the second principle. And I guess so. It's, my camera is losing focus. Let me double check real quick. Um, let me put the paper back on. It will focus. All right. So let's, let me try it this way. Let's trick the camera. So we'll write number two down here. And this is the circle. Of knowledge. I knew it that I knew that would happen. All right, the circle of knowledge. Let's uh, let's do some some drawing. If you have a pen and paper, I would like to uh, invite you to uh, to uh, make some drawing with me as well. Let me see if I can try to uh, fix this real quick. There. All right, it's much better. So let's uh let's draw a circle right here. So when we when we talk about the circle of knowledge, just imagine a circle in in your mind, right? Everything you have known everything that you have learned, all the information that you have will be kept inside this circle. And at this at this circle right here, where I'm pointing at, I would like you to write on there, no, and no. What do I mean by known and no? as in you know something. Let's say you know this is a pen. You know that uh, I am speaking. So that is something that you know. You know information about the Zoom call today. So the knowledge that you are aware of, that you know of, will be contained inside of this circle. And let's draw another circle right outside. And this is the representation of the knowledge, the information that you know 
but you forget. All right, what do I mean by the information that you know and you forget? If, uh, if you look back at, let's say, algebra or calculus, when uh, you take it in either high school or in the beginning of college, right? So calculus is just a higher level of math that uh, I did very well when I was in college. But uh, honestly, I, I don't really remember much of it. And it's not just now, you know, it's, I went to uh, I went to college back in 2000 and uh, and six, I took calculus and I did really well. I got A plus on that. But then a few years after that, when uh, when my friend took calculus, they uh, he he asked me to to help him because he wasn't very good, and uh, I didn't remember anything. So I told him, "Hey, give me give me a few days, and uh, I'll get back to you." So I went online and I look up all of the information of calculus. I even found a test online to to see like how well I understand the topic. And coming to that, I didn't I didn't know anything. When I when I look at the uh, the test, I was clueless. I didn't know what what to do, where to start. But as soon as I look at the material or the formula, it's all coming back to me. And I relearned everything within um, within two days. And then uh, I was able to, to help my friend. So that is the representation of something that you have known before, but you forget. You just don't think about it, but it is still there. So that when um, when when you learn when you when you needed that information, just like how I did, you will be able to go back and and get that information. And thinking you, you you say that uh, she thought she was the uh, the only one who forgot. We all forgot, and uh, and I draw this circle much bigger than uh, the one within it, because the thing that we know is huge. We just forget it. And to demonstrate how big it is. One of the uh, a very famous philosopher named Plato. He's a Greek philosopher. He say that everything that we learn in life, it is not new. We are relearning it. He said he's argued that we already have the information inside of us, and that is the reason that we we fear height. We fear a snake. We we have all kind of fear because those information is already inside of us. He's argued that when when we were born, we already know how to cry, and um, there might be some truth to that. So I just want to uh, I want you to keep in mind in that because what you have forgotten may be a lot more than what you think. But for right now, let's just use the, uh, the calculus example. You know, you have learned it in the past, but then you forgot about it until, until people ask you what it is and you started to remember, you started to buy the information to reactivate those knowledge. And it is super, super powerful. All right, let's move on to uh, the next one. Let's draw another circle just outside of it. And again, I want to uh, amplify, I want to uh, to mention again, this is the circle of knowledge. So this is the representation of knowledge. And this is this is your circle. This is, or this is my circle that we are talking about. So a little bit bigger than the information, the knowledge that we know, but we has forgotten. It will be the knowledge that we know, but we know that we don't know. 
Okay. There's a difference between you knowing something and you forgot about it. There's also knowledge. There's also information that you just know that you don't know. For example, I don't know how to fly an uh, an airplane. You know, like 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 a jet. And uh, crazy thing uh, is, there was a story a couple of years ago. There was this one guy here. He worked at the airport. He was just like a, a normal worker who handled like passenger packages or luggage. And uh, he was not a pilot. Just like me, I was not a pilot. But the difference between me and that guy is he played video game. And uh, he actually know how to fly an airplane in a video game that he was playing. So uh, one day, this is actually it, it, this this story is actually made it to uh, to the news. So this guy, he actually went on. He worked at the airport. So one day, he just decided to you know what, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go in this airplane and uh, and take it for a ride. And he did that. Everybody, he he kidnapped the airplane. He stole it and he, he flew around for. Uh, for a few hours. So I'm not gonna go more into the detail, but back to the point here, there are things that we know that we don't know. But just because we, we know that we don't know of the information, it does not mean that other people do not know about it. And this is how we can learn from other. Just know that there are information there are knowledge that is greater than what you know and we will call it the knowledge that we know we do not know it, it is a little bit greater than the knowledge that you know you forget and last but not least let's draw another circle outside and this is the, the outer circle is the representation of the knowledge that you simply don't know that you don't know so what is it i want you to think a little bit about it like what do i mean by um the knowledge that you don't know that you don't know if anybody can even like give me an example the information uh, that you don't know that you don't know yeah that's, that's how i feel too when i first heard of it like what are you talking about like how can i give you an example if i don't know that i don't know right which is fine there are information there's knowledge that we just simply don't know that is there we just wasn't aware of it, but it is out there. And um, I think it is very, very much, very great. For example, if we look at the cosmic, right? If we look at the universe, I know that science, scientists started to making more discovery. But as for myself, I don't know that. I don't know what is out there. So I, I know that there are things that I just don't know that I don't know until I until I was made aware of it. And that is the beautiful things about communication. That is the beautiful things about having a community, having a friends that uh, from different background, from different walk of life, so that we can come together and we can learn from, from other. Because what I know, you might not know. Or what you know, I might not know. My experiences is different from from yours, and your experiences is different from mine. Like Jasmine said here, she doesn't, she don't know how to cook, but that is a lie. You know, she know how to cook. She just not cooking very good food, <laughs> which is perfectly fine, right? So you say that hey, you don't know how to cook, but yeah, you know how to cook. You know how to make instant noodle. You know how to cook an egg. So you do know that, and you're not just seeing that, 
there's also a circle of knowledge that you think you don't know. It's not in here, but there's something that you think you don't know, but, but, but you know it, which is fine. And uh, let's let's draw another uh, circle to, uh, to make it clearer. So let's say, let's call this uh, Ben. And seeing uh, Jasmine uh, comment first, let's go ahead and uh, and draw a similar circle of knowledge containing four circle. And let's call this Jasmine. All right, so just like mine, Jasmine will have her circle of knowledge, something that she know, that she know, and she will have the circle of knowledge where she know, but she have forgot. And there is also the circle of knowledge where she know that she do not know, or she do not know what she does not know. I know it's my it might be it might be hard to to understand at first, but uh, let's use an example to to make it clearer. So uh, when we talk to you, to all those people, right? Let's say me talking to you right now on this topic. When I when I'm telling you, oh, there's a knowledge that you know you know. There's a knowledge that you know you forget. There's knowledge that you know that you don't know. They are knowledge that you don't know, you don't know. When I first heard of this, I was like, I, my mind went blank. I was like, what are you talking about? This is crazy, you know? <laughs> like, why are we even talking about this? This is nonsense. But after I understood it, this is one of the four greatest principles of life. It will help you understand the entire knowledge of the universe itself. So just because you don't get it yet, it doesn't mean that it is not true. Because this information could fall under the circle that you have already know. And I'm, I'm sure most of the people here have heard of it. Or some people, they they learn so much of other principles, they forgot about this principle. But since I am talking about this, you it start to remind you, it start to remind you of this knowledge. And uh, to uh, some of my friends here, or to my audience in the future, many of you will have never heard of this information before, and this will fall under the don't know that you don't know. And when you, when you hear this, I know the feeling because I was in your shoes. Okay, you will be like, "This is crazy. I, I don't understand it. What are you talking about?" But this is the reason that we need to understand it because we can only use what we know to talk to others. But oftentimes, when we do that. We use what we know, right? Oftentimes, when we communicate with other, it will hit what they do not know. So it doesn't matter how much you say or what you do, they will not get it. They will get confused. And that is okay. You know, if you love them enough, if you care enough about them, just how I love you very much. I care very much about you. And that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm I'm spending time to, to share this information. It is almost like a, a mission. So I'm not gonna give up. I will continue to use what I know. I will continue to talk to you. And hopefully I can go in deeper and hit what you know that you don't know. So that from the state of confusion, being, being confused, 
hopefully I can get to the point where you're like, hey, this this kind of makes sense, right? This information makes a lot of sense, but I just I just I just know that I don't know. So if I can get you to come to a realization that there is something here that you might not know, then I will be more successful. I will be very successful at what I'm doing. And thanking you for uh, for your comment. That is very kind and uh, awesome, right? And if I happen to, if I happen to reach to the circle of knowledge where you can start to realize that you might not know of this information, then I will continue. I will continue to use what I know to hopefully go in even deeper to touch the circle where you know that you forget. And let's use the math example. My friend, he he had never learned calculus. So it's something that he he don't know that he don't know until he go to college, he, until he had to take calculus. He realized that he didn't know that calculus even existed, right? It, it, it's never existed in, in his mind until he know that he do not know anything about calculus, but he has to take it in order to graduate. So from the state of do not know the existence of algebra, he becoming aware of it and it start touching the known that he do not know. And that's when he's come to me to get help, to ask me, to ask Ben that, hey, help me with this, help me with this algebra is too difficult. I don't know how to how to start it right. But the thing is, when he come to me, I already forgotten. <laughs> I already forgotten this information. But I know them. I know about it. I know algebra. I took it. I have an A plus on that class, but I, I forgot about it. So from forgotten algebra, what I do is I go from the state of forgotten I travel to the circle of knowledge that I have no of algebra. And using this, I communicate it. And I make what I know to what he know. So after just two weeks, from not knowing anything about algebra, my friend John, he, he know the existence of algebra. And from talking to me who know algebra very well and willing to share my knowledge with with him, he started to make a connection with me. There's a connection of my knowledge with his knowledge. Then algebra is no longer no longer unknown to him. Right? It's become game something long. that he know of. And this is the power of the circle of knowledge. This is how we need it to do, to help other, to share with other our knowledge because they might not know of it. And if we keep talking about things that they do not know, they will not understand. If we're talking about the information that they know they don't know, they will not understand. Just because we know something, it does not mean that other people know it. Just because we understand something, it does not know that they know they don't know. Therefore, in order to communicate with other, 
in order to learn. We have to go from the known, which is something that they have already know of. And let me draw another piece of paper. And this information is very important. So uh, there will not be uh, much of the interaction today because I would like to use the entire hour to share the, this important knowledge with you, but I will be able to read your comment on the chat. So if you, uh, if you have any question or if you have anything that you would like to share, feel free to, uh, to, uh, to uh, send a message on chat. I will, I will read it and I will respond. And this is the important part. Okay? I want everybody to, uh, to be with me uh, fully, to be very focused on what we are doing right now. All right. If you have a uh, a different piece of paper, I would like to invite you to to draw this with me. All right. Okay. Let's do it. Similarly, I want you to draw a circle, and this one I want to draw right at center of the piece of paper. And this is the representation of what you know that you know. And the word that I would like to use for it, I would like to call this the known because this is the representation of all the knowledge that you have known of. And let's, let's draw another circle, just right outside of the known. This is the representation of the information, the knowledge that you have know of, but you have forgotten, you forgot about it. And let's call this the forgotten. There's a really good song named The Forgotten as well. Of, uh, I forgot the band name, but if you can look it up if you like, or maybe I can play it later. So this is the representation of the knowledge that you have forgotten. And then let's draw another circle. Just right outside of it. And this is the representation of the knowledge, the information that you know you do not know. And this is called the unknown. Because there is something that you have not known yet. Last but not least, this one is huge. So let's draw a circle that is so big that it is outside of our piece of paper here. And this is the, the representation of the information that you don't know that you don't know. And I'm not gonna put the name on this because these are the information that we just simply don't know. And the beautiful things about this is by becoming aware of the circle of knowledge and using the example of the algebra, what we can do is that we can start from what we know, okay? Just like, just like me and algebra, I have learned it and I forgot about it. Therefore, in order to get back the information that I need, I travel from the known in yellow. I will travel out to the forgotten to get the information and then I will travel back to my know. 
And uh, what will happen with this, everybody? Just like the uh, algebra, no, not algebra, just like the calculator example, I acquire the knowledge that I have forgotten. And if I do it again for any other topic, if I go out to the forgotten and coming back to what I've known, I gain these knowledge. And if I'm brave enough to travel even further from what I have known to the unknown, I will hit something that I don't know of and I'm going back and I might not get anything. But if I try again, I still might not get anything from it because I know that I don't know of it. But if I do it often enough, I might get something, right? I can expand my knowledge. This might be slow, but I will be able to do it. You see? So what if I go so far that I actually go into the zone? Okay, let's call this the zone that I don't even know that it is there, that I don't even know that it, it, is, it even exists. Amazing thing will happen, let me tell you. Okay, and this, this is the real term in English. Professional athlete, billionaires, they don't even know what to call it but they all can feel it and they call it being in the zone. And if you are familiar with professional athletes, you will hear this a lot. When they, uh, when they play soccer or when they play football or basketball or baseball, professional athlete, they often do everything they can to get into this zone. And whenever they can get into that zone, that is when they perform the best. That is when they score the highest. And this is actually one of the very big secrets, but that is not the focus today. There's just something that I just want to mention very quickly. And this is how you can expand your knowledge by yourself from exploring the forgotten, from exploring the unknown. But there's an easier way. Let's go back to you. Of the previous piece of paper, there's an easier way to do it. And that easier way is having a friend, right? Let's say this is Ben. This is the circle of knowledge of Ben. And this is the circle of knowledge of Jasmine. It is much easier learning. Let's say me and Jasmine, it would be easier for Jasmine to, to explore what I know and learn from me because there are things that I know that fall under her don't know, don't know. And there's a thing that I know of that's going to fall under her know that she doesn't know or the information that it will fall under her know but forgotten. So by talking to me, she will be able to expand her knowledge. So it's no longer just this smaller circle here. It actually reaching out is becoming greater. And you know what? The more people that we talk to, the more information that we will get, the more that we know. And this is super powerful. This is why we need to have a good relationship, okay? Just like the uh, the seven holistic well, once you have good relationship, when you start talking to people, it will improve your inner self. And this is one of the reasons that we have a very strong connection between relationship to inner self, to health, to finance. And this is the beautiful thing about 
the circle of knowledge. And if you if you can see the circle right here, you will feel very, very good about yourself because there are things that you know, there are things that you are good at that I don't know of. I have no idea, okay? Because I, I live in the US, I don't know anything about Vietnam. I know I have a lot of Vietnamese friends here. There's a lot of opportunity in Vietnam that I, I cannot get to, but you can. But together, we can share that knowledge. We can, be, we can become greater. And there's a story that uh, I would like to, to end this topic with, and it will show you the beauty of understanding the circle of knowledge, because it is not just simply the knowledge itself. It is also the people, because when you understand in this, you will realize that we are all equal, right? The circle of knowledge of my don't know, don't know is likely the same as yours. Everything that I know I don't know, very likely that it is the same as yours. What we know that we've forgotten may be similar, but it might not be the same. The one that I I know of and the one that you have know of, this might be a little bit different, but it is insignificant to the knowledge out there. And the story that I would like to tell you is the story about the rabbit and the turtle. In English, it's the turtle, they, uh, they often call it more like a, a tortoise. But I don't know if if I call it the tortoise. I don't know if uh, if uh, people know what it is. So I would like to use the word turtle. It's it's more familiar with me as well. So the story begin. The story is about the rabbit and the turtle. And the story begin as once upon the time in um, in the animal kingdom. And rabbit is is very fast. It can run very very fast and. He uh he love it, you know. He he feel very good about it, and he keep bragging to all of that. Hey, I can run very very fast, and I'm proud of it. I'm super happy of of how great I am. All of my knowledge about running, and um, one day the rabbit walked past the total, and the rabbit start making fun of the total. And the reason for that is the turtle was walking way too slow. And the rabbit, you're like, hey, you know, you are so slow. Like, how long does it take you to walk from here to the tree? And um, the turtle answered that, uh, I don't know, but I will, I will get there. And uh, they started to uh, get into uh, an argument of, uh, of speed and uh and all of the crazy things. So uh, the rabbit was like, you know what? If you know so much about running, if you know so much about walking, let's go on a race. You know, I challenge you to, to a race. And I will invite every other animal to come to see it. And I will crush you on that race. And um, the turtle said, yeah. That is fine. Let's uh, let's do it. So on one beautiful day, uh, the race starts, and all the animals gather to to that that race. And um, the race started. The rabbit run very very fast. He run way far out, and he looked back and he saw that the uh, the turtle was only able to make a few steps and the rabbit was like this is way too easy you know there's no way that the the total can catch up to to me so uh i win this for sure and i will show everybody how stupid the total is and the rabbit run past the finishing line the rabbit won it was easy it was it was not a challenge at all. And the, the rabbit 
felt very good about himself. He was like, yeah, I am, I'm the cricket, I'm the best. And uh, after a few hours, the, the turtle get there and uh, the turtle compliment the, the rabbit, you know, yeah, you are very, very fast, but you know what? Because this is just my warm up. I'm just warming up. I can beat you, I just didn't want to. And the, and the rabbit didn't believe it. The rabbit, the rabbit was making fun of the turtle. Like, what are you talking about? I, I beat you by hours and uh, I can do it again. I can prove it to you again. It was so easy. And the turtle said that, you know what? If you are so confident, let's put some money on it, okay? I would just, I would just having fun. So I, I wasn't being serious about running. So if you, if you want to play for real, let's put some money on it. So they put some money on it <laughs> because the rabbit was so confident, you know, that he is the best runner out there. And he just proved to everybody that he can easily beat the total. So they put a large amount of money on it. And uh, the race start under one condition. The turtle say that yes, I will. I will play with you. I will put some money on there, but I will get to choose where we are running. And uh, the rabbit didn't even think about it. He think that he's gonna win for sure anyway. So whatever, he doesn't care. Let's make some easy money. Let's put some money on it. And the race started on at the top of the hill. And as soon as uh, the race start, the uh, the rabbit run very very quickly, and to his surprise, the turtle rolled past him. Okay, the turtle didn't run; the turtle rolled past the rabbit because it is so the turtle have a strategy where he doesn't even run. He just uh, go into, into inside his shelf and he start rolling. And the more he rolled, the faster his speed is. And the finishing line is at the bottom of the hill. And uh, the rabbit couldn't catch up to the turtle and the turtle won. And uh, the rabbit was so upset, you know, he was like, that isn't fair. I was running and just because of the condition, I couldn't get, I couldn't catch up to this turtle. So this is not fair. I mean, I lost a lot of money, but you got to give me a chance to, to make some money back, right? You can't just, it can't just end like this. Let's, let's do double or nothing. All right. I challenge you to another race and let's do a double or nothing. And uh, and this time I want to choose the uh, the location. I want to choose um, the uh, a, a different place. I don't want to I don't want to run on hill because that's that's that wasn't fair. I want to run on flat land. And let's double or nothing. Let's let's do it again. And the turtle he just smile and he say that you know what, let's, let's triple it. Let's triple the money. If, if you are so confident that you can beat me, we can run on flat land. Then that's, that's kind of puzzle the rabbit. He was like, what are you talking about? I already beat you on flat land. Well, well, if you agree to, let's, let's do it. Okay. Let, let's, let's do it. But then the total said that, yes, but there's, another condition because you are running so fast there's it's gonna be hard for me to catch up for you everybody know that already so my condition is that it's going to be a long distant race let's run five miles okay and after the, the and that is after the rabbit has picked the, the location so the turtle say that you can choose the location but i want I, at that location I want to run, I want the race to be five miles long to the east. And let's triple the money. Let's do that. 
And the rabbit was very happy. He was like, flatland, five mile, better for me because I can run faster. So let's do it. Let's, let's me uh, get my money back. Let's me make some more money. So on a beautiful morning, all the animals gather to, to see the race. And uh, the rabbit was ready. He was super pumped. He's going to prove to everyone that he is not a loser. He's going to not only make all his money back, but he's going to make money from this stupid turtle. And as soon as the race start, the rabbit have learned his lesson. He's, he just run right away super fast. And he... Uh, he goes so far away that he couldn't even see the total. He was super happy about it. But this time, you know, there's no way that he's going to make any mistake. He's just going to keep running. He's just going to get to the finishing line. And he's going to make some good money. He's going to have a good day. And the rabbit start thinking about how he's going to spend his money. You know, he's going to buy some uh, carrots or something. He's going to have a good time after this. And then all of a sudden, the, uh, the rabbit stopped. He, he was so shocked that he couldn't even move a single muscle. He was just standing there. And in front of him is a very, very large river. And the rabbit know that he's, he cannot go any further. And the finishing line is not too far away. He can see it, but he just cannot know how to get past the river. And after the rabbit is sitting there waiting for hours, four or five hours, the, the total finally get there. And... Uh, the turtle just starts swimming past the river and the turtle got to the finishing line and the turtle won the race. And that, my friend, is the story of the rabbit and the turtle. And um, the lesson behind this story that I would like to share with, with you guys is just because we know something, just because we are good at something, it does not mean that other people are not good at it. There are, there are information that we think we know, but sometimes it's far under the information that we we forgot. You know, the rabbit forgot that the turtle can roll. The rabbit forgot that the turtle can swim. He don't know that there was a river, you know, he don't know what he don't know. He don't know that the rays gonna start in at the top of the hill. So in life, we sometimes it's important for us to be humble, to be, to be careful. And it is important for us to expand our knowledge because the more we know, the better it is, the safer we are. And um, there is a uh, there's a happy ending to to my story actually because after that race the uh, the turtle didn't take the money the turtle just want to teach the rabbit a lesson just like what I just told you that in life we we need to be humble we need to be consistent because consistency win race and uh, knowing what we don't know we can ask for help. And uh, the turtle and the, the rabbit became best friends. They uh, they partner up and uh, they win many, many races in their life because when uh, they get to difficult uh, environments like the river, for example, the, the turtle can help the, the rabbit get past uh, the river and the rabbit can use his speed to, to win the race. So by working together, they they was the perfect partner, and uh, that is another moral of the 
the story, everyone, you know, instead of instead of hate, instead of challenging other, we we can learn to love, we can learn to be kind to other, we can learn to help each other, we can learn to work together, and together we can do great things. And um, I uh, would like to uh, personally thank you for for being here, for joining us, for making this possible. And together we will we will learn more. We will uh, we will do this, guys. We will spread this knowledge, and we will make the world a a better place. And uh, yeah, thank you, Nick. All right. Good. Uh, Good night, everybody, all my friends in Vietnam, and good morning, a lot of my friends in the US, and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>